Hello, I'm Greg Lamb with the Slater Group. In this video, I'm going to review Sage One Accounting. This will be a two-part review. In this first part, I'll give an introduction to Sage One Accounting, navigate around a bit, and explore the banking and reconciliation functionality. Sage One has been out for a few years now, but why I'm finally doing a review is that things have changed as of spring 2015. Previously, the US and UK versions have been different, with the UK version being much more robust. Well now, the US version is using the same code base as the UK version, which means it's on par with its European counterpart. This is good news for US users. This new Sage One is called Sage One Accounting, but throughout this review, I'll simply call it Sage One for brevity's sake. Something I always check when evaluating online accounting software is whether it has accounting basics, like accrual accounting, good control over the chart of accounts, and the ability to create journal entries. Sage One has all of this. This means that small businesses can accurately produce profit and loss and balance sheet reports, which lets them see how much money their company makes, how much money their company is worth, and how their company achieved that worth. This review is of the US version of Sage One, but many countries have specific localizations. This software is what I consider micro business software, which means it's good for very small businesses with few or no employees. Okay, enough talk, let's go in and check out the software. The first thing you'll see is the summary page, which is Sage One's dashboard. What's unique about this summary page is that it has multiple tabs. The first tab is a getting started guide with links to get everything set up. I like that there's this guide, but after you're done using it, it'd be nice to be able to hide it. The next tab over is the sales tab. What I like about this tab is that it gathers all the sales reports that you'd want to access the most, like monthly sales and overdue invoices while allowing you to click on most pieces of information to drill down further into details. Something I don't often see in accounting software dashboards is reports on cash flow. Well, if you take a look at the cash flow forecast tab, you'll be able to quickly see how much cash your business will or will not have once customer invoices, vendor bills, and tax liabilities are taken into consideration. It's not perfect in that expenses paid using a credit card are not considered a liability, but instead is considered cash flow out. But if you take the time to enter your recurring transactions, like loan payments, you can see that data shows up as expected other payments. I like the tabbed approach to the summary page as it provides a good snapshot of the main areas that a business owner would be interested in, such as sales, expenses, and cash. Other software tends to cram this all into a single dashboard page, which I find simplifies the information so much that I end up going directly to the reports page or other parts of the software to get a better view of what I'm looking for. Sage One isn't too complicated, so it shouldn't take you a long time to figure out where everything is. I thought that some features in the banking page could be located in the sales and expenses pages, as I'll soon show you, but otherwise, most functionality is found where a regular accountant software user would expect them to be. One of the first areas I look at with accountant software is their banking slash reconciliation page. The banking page in Sage One first gives you a snapshot of all your bank and credit card accounts. It includes the balance as well as the last date the account was reconciled. To see a bank account's transactions, you need to click on the account. At the top, you'll get a graph showing the balance of the account. I think too much real estate is given to account details on the top. In the activity tab, you'll see transactions, but be warned that it's only transactions for the past month. To see more transactions, you'll need to click on the filter button and change the dates. I don't understand why it just doesn't show all the transactions by default, since there's a limit of 10 transactions per page. And that's another thing, why can't there be a toggle to show 50 or 100 transactions? Most software are able to show more rows of data at a time. In any case, I like that the data can be sorted by the column headers, and it shows the cleared and reconciled status. So you know, cleared means that it's been categorized using transactions downloaded from the bank. Whereas reconciled means that you've confirmed that the transactions match what's shown on your bank statement. Some items won't be cleared, like when you manually enter a transaction, but all items should be reconciled against your bank statement. A column I feel is missing is one showing the balance after each transaction. Having the balance will let you match what's in Sage One to what's in your bank account a lot easier. You're able to click on any transaction to pull it up. I like the orange notice saying that because you've reconciled the transaction, what you can change is limited. I think this is a smart move that protects from accidental changes. To get transactions into Sage One, 
The easiest way is by getting them directly from the bank. It's not immediately obvious by looking at the page, but you can do this by clicking on the arrow to the right of the reconcile button and either choosing import statement or download transactions. I don't really like the naming as import statement really means uploading a bank transactions file while download transactions means connecting to your online bank and automatically having the transactions imported. I've imported a statement so if I choose that option it will show me my imported transactions that I haven't categorized yet. Please be aware that you must categorize all transactions first before you're able to import another set of transactions. With the download transactions option, this is not a problem since transactions are automatically imported for you. The default setting for all transactions is create, as in create a new transaction using the imported data. If the transaction is similar to one you've categorized before, the fields will be filled out and all you need to do is click on create. Where the software isn't as automated is when you need to match an imported transaction to an existing one found in Sage 1. Unlike other software, potential matches aren't shown. So you'll need to click on match and then on find match again. Why you need to click twice, I don't know. And manually find the match in transactions. What's also unlike other software is if you've already entered a transaction, whether it's a payment for an invoice or a purchase at Stables for some office supplies, those transactions won't appear as potential matches. Instead, only unpaid invoices and bills as well as unused credits will show up. I think this is a serious oversight of the software since it punishes you for entering transactions in advance. Instead of receiving a nice match that you can accept, you have to be on the ball enough to know that you've already entered the transaction into your software and be confident enough to remove this imported transaction from this page. What it does do well though is let you choose multiple unpaid invoices or bills and allocate various amounts to them. Where it falls short is that you can't simultaneously use credits and invoices, nor is there any mechanism for adjusting the deposited or paid amount to include things like bank or merchant fees. Overall, dealing with imported transactions is okay, but it could definitely be a lot better. Once you've processed all the imported transactions, you can then reconcile them. I really like the reconcile page since it's a good double check that all the transactions in Sage 1 are accurate. As mentioned previously, once you reconcile a transaction, it cannot be significantly modified. This is a double-edged sword, since once you officially complete a reconciliation, you're unable to undo it. Well, at least as far as I can tell. The last thing I'll show you about the banking page is how you create new transactions. You click on New Entry, and then choose whether it's an expense payment, sales receipt, or a money transfer. What I find a bit confusing is that there's actually multiple tabs to this. The first is vendor payment, which is to pay vendor bills. The second is other payment, which despite its name is entering a regular expense, like when you purchase some office supplies from Staples. And the last is customer refund, where you can issue a refund if one of your customers has a credit note. I think that vendor payment and customer refund are options that would be better placed under the sales and expenses page, which I'll cover in the next video. What I should point out is that if you want to create a recurring transaction, the way to do it is to enter another payment. And then once you enter it, if you go to the Activity tab, you find the transaction and click on it. And then you click on the Create Recurrent Payment button. This is the only way to create recurring transactions. You can't do this with sales invoices or vendor bills. That's it for the banking page. It's about average for micro business software. You'll need to step up to small business software like Xero or QuickBooks Online to get more advanced and automated functionality. If you find yourself needing some help in Sage 1, you can click on the live chat icon. If they're not available, you can leave an email message. There's also phone support, but you'll have to click on the home page, then contact us, then some additional clicks in order to get to the toll-free number. It's not the easiest number to find. If you're into self-help, you can click on the question mark icon, which will bring you to the support site. There's a limited amount of articles, and I haven't found any with screenshots or videos, so it could definitely be more user-friendly. Additionally, using quotes in a search doesn't work, so I sometimes found it hard to find the right article I was looking for. For example, if I type something in like bank reconciliation, it would give me tons of results. This is it for part one of the video review. In part two, I'll discuss invoicing, billing, payments, getting data in and out, 
reports, sales taxes, and finally, present my recommendation for Sage One Accounting. This is Greg Lamb for The Sleeter Group, and I'll catch you on the flip side.